Do you offer something valuable? Is it actually valuable enough for someone to pay you a worthy price for it? And in today's economy, can you still build a meaningful business and make some good money while also delivering a quality product? We're going to be talking about it on today's show. Hello, everyone. My name is Blake Benz. I'm the host of the Good Advice Podcast, and I appreciate you tuning in today. This is another late night episode on my end. Of course, you know, you're listening to it wherever you are, whatever you're doing, but it has been a busy, busy, busy season for good advice and podcastable, exciting stuff. Um, very much excited for this fall and winter seasons coming up. I think it's going to be the best months we've ever had for the businesses, but, uh, it has caused my podcasting routine, at least in the short term to be a little bit different than usual. So if you're a long time listener, um, sorry for things being a little bit different. And if you're new to the show, you've come to the right place to learn how to do business better. We talk a lot about the actionable, practical things that you need to know to grow and build your business. Before we dive into today's episode, though, we have a word from one of the amazing businesses that sponsors the podcast. So be right back soon. There's one single piece of advice that I give to business owners who are ready to scale their business drastically. And that's knowing exactly what you need to hand off so that you can continue focusing on what you're an expert in. It amazes me when I talk to business owners who are doing their own bookkeeping and tax prep and worse that they're going through all of this paperwork at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, even midnight, slaving away trying to make sense of all of the numbers for their business. Business owners who are making it happen have already figured out that you can't do it all yourself. That's why I recommend Steve Lay with Equity Business Solutions. Not only is he an expert in bookkeeping and tax prep, but what I love about Steve is that he'll sit down with you and help you make sense of the value of your business beyond just reading a spreadsheet. You'll be able to make better decisions, and more importantly, you're going to save yourself the crucial time you would have spent going through QuickBooks or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever it is that keeps us up late at night. So save yourself some time and some money by giving Steve Lay a call at Equity Business Solutions, and he'll show you the value beyond your numbers. Go to EquityBusinessSolutionsLLC.com to find out more. So I'm going to do my best. It is 10 o'clock at night on a Friday night for me, and so I'm going to do my best to... Uh, there's some things I've been wanting to talk about. We're going to have to have a longer episode on the start of next week to, to break down some concepts, but um, I'm going to try to be brief and get to the point in today's show. Um, uh, there are certain things that just keep coming up on the podcast, and the more that these things, it, it's like I wish, I wish some of these things I could just say at one time and be like, all right, we covered it. It's done, right? We, sh we can ship it. We got it. But I'm just seeing more and more the bad habits that are costing people success in their business, success in the way they connect with other people. And I, I want to address that today, mostly based on this headline about McDonald's ending their AI drive through program. Now, if you're not familiar with this, I'm not actually sure if there was one in Northwest Arkansas, um, but I was told today, in fact, let me Google this real quick. Hang on. Let me Google something here. Keep you in waiting. Let's see. Okay, I don't see it. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, I got it. Okay, so um getting sorry for having that like 60 seconds of like what's actually happening here. So there was this headline that McDonald's is ending their AI menu, which if you're not familiar with it, this is where you would go through the drive-thru and instead of there being someone saying, hey, can I take your order? It was an AI thing and it, it wasn't like hidden or anything. It wasn't obfuscated. It was very clearly AI. Um, it, I think it even listed on there that it was AI and it said, you know, say your order clearly and, you know, whatever. Um, now my experience with this, I, I did, I went through one in Kansas city. My experience was actually, uh, I, 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 I want to say it was actually positive. It, it wasn't positive in that it wasn't memorable. 
It didn't increase the value in my mind of my interaction with McDonald's. Um, but it wasn't, it was not painful though. It, there was no, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. You know, is this your order? And it's like something totally different. Like the food was the, was correct. All that stuff, you know, it, it functionally, it worked. So there weren't errors there. It, it, there wasn't a problem with it. It wasn't a tech issue. And yet McDonald's announced recently that they are ending that program. They're getting rid of the AI menus. I thought this was kind of interesting, considering we're in an, an age of AI where everyone is AIing their menu. Everyone is AIing, <laughs> you know, the the they're trying to do business faster, cheaper, more efficiently. And getting to the point, what I have to tell you is there is a heart and soul to your business, and that is the fire that connects to people. That's the passion. That's the, 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 the soul of the business. It's the value that's there. You have to understand that when you go into business, you're not going into business because you're the only one doing what you're doing. Like, let's be very clear about this. I think sometimes people have a little bit of a grand idea of their place in the market. And what they think is, I'm the only one doing blank. We're the only ones who offer this service. And more often than not, you really are offering the same thing that dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands others may be doing. When I got into the consulting space and I started good advice, I was like, this is going to be great. No one does this. And then surprise, I realized there are not just local options. You throw a rock in any direction, you go to any website and you're probably like three or four clicks away from getting to another website that has a consultant on it. So you're, what you offer really is not that special or unique. That's not a dig. That's not to make anybody insecure. It's just to remind us that the offer itself is not enough. There has to be a human connection. I've talked about this a lot on the show that uh, my friend Brian Sexton, who's the author of the book, People Buy From People, incredible man, incredible sales guy. He's been in the sales world for 30 plus years. Excellent salesperson. In fact, one conversation with this guy will convince you that he's an amazing salesperson. This guy, I have had offhand comments with him, and then he will bring up details later. He knows all of my kids' names. He knows my wife's name. He knows like birthdays. I mean, this is this is an incredible salesperson. Well, one thing he talks a lot about is people buy connection. They buy from people. And so when we see businesses removing the human element from business, why would we be surprised that it ultimately doesn't work? I think I think I love talking about Chick-fil-A in this regard because you think about the last 10 years of Chick-fil-A. How has the fast food industry changed in the last 10 years because of Chick-fil-A? Think about this. When I was a kid, you'd go through the drive-through, you'd order on the menu, and there's been some small adjustments like, you know, the the um, LED screen that it's, it's at the ordered menu, the, the, wow, I can't say these words when you're actually ordering, it shows you if the order's correct. Um, so they don't have to like say it back to you, right? You remember those days where they would say the order back to you to make sure it was correct. In fact, they may actually still do this. I don't know, but 10, 15 years ago, you'd go through the drive through You'd hope you were at the right window. Cause you know, you had like this day of like, I think we've done, a lot of McDonald's actually still do this, the, the window you pay at and then the window that you actually get your food at. But a lot of more modern fast food places to only have, they only have the single window. But think about how Chick-fil-A modernized this, how they innovated it. When you go through a Chick-fil-A drive through do you go to a big menu? No. Someone comes to your door. Someone literally walks to your door. Hi, how are you? They have a name tag, you know, they're pretty beaming and, and, you know, optimistic. So while businesses are pulling away from connection, 
you have Chick-fil-A literally innovating the industry by walking directly up to your car. Now, one thing I, I want to, the thing that I was Googling earlier was after I shared about this, I was uh, sharing this about at an event today and someone mentioned to me as an offhand comment, they said, Hey, you know, some chickens has that, this AI menu. And I thought, no. And so I just remembered it. I Googled it and yes, they do. <laughs> they do. They not only slim chickens, but also Wendy's. I mean, there's, I guess it's IBM. I don't know who it is. People are making some good menu, some good menu, some good money doing this, but, and you know, automation's inevitable. People trying to cut costs is inevitable, but I think it's interesting that as businesses grow and they think about their strategy for growth, it's interesting to me that there's such a, an intentional decision to remove that human element for how they do business. You know, if you're a small business owner and you're thinking about scale, one of the best pieces of advice that I got for my business was someone was talking to me about their business. They have a massive brand and they said, I love doing things that don't scale. Writing notes to customers, calling customers, gifts, conversations, spending. I loved, I talked about, um, I'm blanking on his name, uh, Patrick Stewart, who's the CEO of a, of a clothing store, talked about on the show a lot, grew their clothing store during COVID from 70 locations to 100 plus. How did that happen when many people saw the retail industry as dying? Well, one quote he gave me on the podcast was spending more time with customers rather than less. This is the Jerry Maguire concept, right? If you didn't see the, the Tom Cruise movie in the, in the opener, he gets fired. Sorry, spoilers. He gets fired because he writes this manifesto. And one of the big lines for that manifesto, better customers, less customers, more time with those customers. But this was not in sync with a corporation that was thinking about pro uh, profit at all costs, making as much money as possible. Now, don't hear me wrong. I'm not talking about you shouldn't try to make money or have good margins or what have you. What I'm telling you, though, is we've got to understand how valuable it is to connect with your buyer. We have to understand the value of creating a connection with that buyer because that is the pathway to a raving fan. That is the pathway to someone who adores your brand, who will buy your brand for the rest of your life or will tell people about how incredible your brand is. I think sometimes we're so concerned with this concept of scale that we totally miss the mark in understanding that how you do business matters. It's it's so funny to me. Like I, I've talked to so many businesses and I've worked with so many businesses that run incredible businesses, amazing businesses, and how little time they put into mathing out, being smart about the P&L of their business. And, and this isn't like a dig. It's not to say like you shouldn't be good with the numbers or know your numbers or what have you, but... We've so hyper focused on making this whole thing efficient and reducing, you know, costs by 3% or, you know, reducing our overhead or, you know, all these things that are so micro and in the weeds and intensive. When there's people out there who are running incredible businesses who frankly put very little attention on those things. They just focus on good business. And I don't mean like good business math. I mean, when they sell something to a customer, they look the customer in the eyes. They ask the customer, what did you think about this service? When the customer is unhappy, they say, hey, I'm going to take ownership of that. I'm going to fix that. It's not, it's not, you know, contrast that with 
you call someone and you say, you call your cable company or your phone company and you get the, your call is important to us. You know, as you hold on the phone for 45 minutes to an hour and you get someone who you have to, you know, they pass you around and you explain over and over again what the problem is. And you're like, if I could just talk to someone, can I just talk to someone who can help me? My friend Damon Burton wrote a post on Facebook, incredible SEO guy, runs SEO National, he talked about um, a customer that they had made a mistake with. And he sent a direct email and he said, hey, we screwed this up and I'm going to make it right. This is someone who understands how to build long-term customers. So ChatGPT, AI, use it. You, there's nothing wrong with these things. There's nothing wrong with things that support your brand. But if these are the things that become the soul of your brand, I'd say be careful. I'd say be careful. Understand that these tools are accessible to everyone, especially your competitors. You embracing it doesn't make you smart or futuristic or savvy. It actually makes you just like everybody else. We have McDonald's AI menu, McDonald's, Wendy's, Slim Chickens, AI menus, Chick-fil-A, someone walks up and says, hello, it's different. It costs more but it makes an impression on the customer. Hey, that's today's Good Advice episode. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. And if you're a first time listener to the show, what are you waiting on? Click that subscribe or follow button so you can keep getting good advice. And other than that, if you ever want to support the podcast, you can check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash good advice. Or if you want to advertise your business on the show, you can always reach out Blake at goodadvicecoaching.com. That's today's good advice. We'll catch you later. See ya.